Hello, welcome back to Funtime Crafts 24 seven. Uh, this is another a little bit more in depth uh, review and demo of the Sizzix uh, stamp and stencil tool uh, or their Sizzix stamping platform. Um, it is a really nice platform. I've been having so much fun playing with it. Um, I did a quick little demo because I was so excited about it yesterday and uh, we stamped a flower sack towel. Uh, with some IOD, Iron Orchid Design Stamps, um, and their Iron Orchid uh, Design Ink, which was called Ocean Deep. It's a beautiful turquoise color, uh, turquoise blue, and um, I did this uh, on both sides, so I had the design, but we only stamped one side together. And um, the nice thing about this stamping tool and doing items like this, the cloth sticks to the sticky grid mat and thus doesn't shift and you can do repeat stamping on even material. Um, we also stamped this balsa wood item uh, together to see how it would work, would work with like some different types of home decor uh, pieces. And it worked great. Uh, we stamped a little lion or this little... Oh, what is that? A shield symbol type symbol and a, a little border at the bottom, which I repeated at the top um, together. And it worked great. The put the balsa wood onto the sticky grid mat and went ahead and stamped it and it turned out great. And then this is what I turned it into a little hanging decor piece. I uh, thought it turned out just beautiful. Added uh, some Prima molds to it, a little crocheted ribbon, a Prima flower um, some little book corners I got off of Amazon, a crocheted ribbon hanger, and um, thought this just came out super cute. You could gift this or hang it up in your house somewhere, and it would be just super fun. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit more of an in-depth demo of it. Uh, somebody had, after I posted the, that uh, demo video this morning, had said, I uh, bet it would work great for t-shirts, and they are right. Oh my heavens. So I... I just went in and then I also um, went on a tangent with uh, some more larger uh, balsa wood pieces and thought, hey, why don't, I show you, why don't I show you how it works, but also give you a bit more in depth on the details of uh, the stamping tool. Because I didn't necessarily go over too much of what comes in the box and stuff. Um, although I don't have the box, <laughs> I was excited. It worked. I pitched it. But uh, what actually comes with the stamping tool um, is, uh, it also comes with a, um, a stencil holder, um, because this also does, uh, stenciling, um, this little fun little stencil system, uh, you pop this on here and Sizzix has, um, stencils that attach to this, uh, holder, uh, onto the, uh, sticky grid mat, uh, for your project. And this holds them very sturdy and nice. Um, I haven't used it yet. Uh, that's just what it looked like from watching other demos. But this this it, this tool comes with this, so uh, so you don't have to buy the extra. It's not extra. So the actual platform itself is approximately nine and a quarter inches long by approximately ten inches wide. The actual area that you can stamp in, because the lid has a lip on both sides, is uh, approximately uh, nine and a quarter by roughly uh, 12 and a half. Um, the sticky grid mat is a uh, um, European size. It's about eight and a quarter uh, by about 11 and three quarters. Um, but you can still put uh, American standard size paper on this um, letter size, eight and a half by 11. You can actually put any size on it because it's so big. The sticky grid mat is so big that... Um, it, it will hold large items pretty well as well. So um, it this came separately. Um, it's included in it, but it didn't come attached. So this had a cover piece on the front and the back. You peel them off, and then you apply it in this designated rectangular area um, as straight as you can, and then it just adheres really nice. You're supposed to keep the carrier sheet for the top to keep this from getting... Uh, particles and dirt and hair <laughs> and things like that on it um I've been playing with it all morning though and so my carrier sheet's over on the other table but they they recommend you keeping the carrier sheet uh so you can apply it back on the top of it it doesn't stick all that well um so you'll wanna um like I was I was taping mine down uh you'll wanna 
apply a little um, tape to the corners of it or the sides uh, so it doesn't, you know, buckle up and things um, like this. Uh, you don't have to have it. It just helps to keep it to keep it to keep its tackiness without getting all the dust particles and things on it. Um, so there is that. And so then, like I was saying, was um, this. Uh, so the lid comes off like this. You can use both sides to stamp with. One side has a etched grid. One side is smooth. Um, the hinging portion on this works so stinking nice. I I love how sturdy. And uh, how nice this this stamps. There's not very much movement in it. So to do repetitive stamping, um, uh, to re-ink images up, um, it works really good for that. Um, this works like this. So to use the stencil tool, uh, what you do is you line, you pop your paper down, and then um, you figure out where well I don't have to take that off now um you figure out where you want your paper um you you put this on here then you put your stencil on these two um knobs here and that holds your stencil and you can figure out where you want to put your paper so then you apply you take the stencil off apply your paper and then put your stencil back on and adjust if you need to um and this allows you for whatever height uh length if you're if you are doing repeat stenciling um if you needed to you know start here or start start here and then move down uh you you could do that um it it moves just like the hinge does so you have these different little increments um you all can also buy separately these these are separate um little attachments that um these are like a little oh 10 they come 10 in a pack and I think I dropped all 10 on the floor <laughs> but they're these little strips that you can add to your own stencils so you don't have to buy these specific um and so you just peel this off attach the sticky portion to your stencil and then this is what makes it connect to this and then this holds it sturdy from for, so it doesn't shift um hold on let me pick these up <laughs> Okay, so I got those and I figured we could, um, got those picked up. And since I have those, but I don't have any of the actual stencils that they sell for this, they haven't come in yet. Um, I only got those. Um, I figured we could, uh, I was thinking you don't necessarily have to have this. You could actually use this just, you could buy one pack of these because a pack of 10 is like $5. Um, you could buy one of these and then you could just use this as a template, um, is what I was thinking. And basically I was just going to. Like, these are a diamond press vine stencil. I'm going to do this one like this and see if I can get a hole punch. And maybe just we could make our own. Uh, you could just use it as a template and you wouldn't necessarily have to. Um, and you could probably do it on either side, too. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm just going to test the waters a little because you're going to want it to be the same size. Uh, this one's too small. Let's see what size we actually have to have here. Um, this one is, does it say the size? No, of course not. That would be too convenient. Oh, oh, wait. Nope. That's, this one is too big. Pretty sure that one is too big. Oh, Chucky Dawn. Oh, wait. What about the crocodile? Eh, let's see if the crocodile is. Mm, the crocodile might be the perfect size. The large one? The large crocodile? Where are you? This might be. Oh, it's like right there. I, this might this might be the one. Okay, let's give it a whirl. So the large crocodile. Uh, let's. Is there a right way for this? Well, I say we just give it a whirl right here. Oh, it's gonna. Uh, you kind of have to uh, do a little maneuvering to see where you can actually put this at, so you're not into your design. I don't, I don't know as if it would be that big of a deal because you can shift, 
you can shift. Oh. Oh, <laughs> wrong one. I was like, why isn't this doing anything? Oh, and then I wanted to go this way so that way I could see where it was actually punching in. Like you can see it go in. Oh, that was like the perfect hole. Okay, let's do that again. And I'm holding this on the edge so that way I know how far down it has to go. Like you can't just, because there's a certain spacing. Wait, go back. We had to go this way because we have to watch that go into the hole. All right, we got it. Let's see if it worked. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I missed it. All right, well, that's why you use the little attachers, I guess. Oh, yeah, see? If you don't do it properly. I probably should have just adhered it onto that, onto that one. Okay. Well, did we learn our lesson, or are we going to try it again? <laughs> I don't think I learned my lesson. Hold on. <laughs> and honestly, if I was a genius, I would, <laughs> I would put some tape on it. <laughs> Maybe that would make it not shift. <laughs> okay, lesson be learned. Uh, find your spot and tape it. <laughs> Wait. Be a little mastermind here. <laughs> Maybe we want to secure it a little better than that. I'm kind of doing a, a half job here. <laughs> it's a little bit poor workmanship. <laughs> the excitement. Does it work? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's inconceivable. <laughs> Where am I at? Okay, and Okay, now let's see if that worked. All right, if it doesn't, I'll stick the thing on. Oh, I think it worked. Oh yeah, it worked. Oh, it's a little bit bulgy though. Let's see how these uh I don't have any. Let's see are these bulgy? No, those aren't bulgy. Okay, we'll use these because it's not as easy to punch a hole in this thing. But if you want to give it a whirl, it's the large one on your crocodile. It it's like the perfect size hole. Um, just about. <laughs> so we'll find then. <laughs> we'll put this on the edge. Call it a day. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um. Uh... there all right fine <laughs> okay we'll do it this way then and i suppose you could probably put one at the top and one at the bottom or one on the side so you could turn it however you want okay and then uh let's see let's take this piece off so i've i guess we'll just go stenciling first huh well that was easy <laughs> and uh i'm just gonna put a generic piece of paper down uh i'm not even gonna because this, I'm just gonna, you know, test it. I'm not, I'm not gonna make a card or anything. I just wanted to test it out and see what happened. So there's a, these two tabs go up, and like you have to be able to read Sizzix, um, if it to know if you're going in the right way or not. So now let's go ahead and now this is probably gonna be your sturdiest, um, versus down here. Uh, that's that's pretty darn sturdy though, um, for holding your. For holding your stencils, that's that's pretty nice. So now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I got a little spearmint green going on. A little uh whoops, blending brush action. Uh here. And let's see. You're always used to like holding something, you know. But look at how sturdy that is. Oh wow, yeah, this oh my. That's actually pretty decent. Uh, you might have to be a little bit more gentle off the edge and stuff, but 
Oh yeah, when you're down here and you're not up here, you d see how it shifted? I saw it move. Um, but here, you, there, you don't really have any of that problem. Um, yeah, you don't really have any problem on the on the edge there, uh, the one that's actually being held. So it would probably be even more dramatic if it was all the way to here. Um, so I would definitely, oh, and yeah, so you want to make sure to put your hand here as well. That is nice that you have a place to put your hand. Uh, so you can feel like you're holding it, but you probably want to do the same, uh, once you get down to here, but I think, oh, and then you can even lift it, like keeps it so sturdy that you can lift and see it. Do I like it that dark? Do I need it more, less, whatever? Um, like that to me is pretty darn good. So if you are going this way as well, you're probably going to get just as much of a, um, of a, uh down here a dramatic down here um as you are on this edge so to be even worse down here so you want to just keep that in mind and you'll probably want to put a little pressure um but if you also weren't doing like a whole sheet like i have on here either well it was a stencil that moved not necessarily well let's see let's take this off because if if we just had a little oh but but not my i don't want to take my um a sticky grid mat off um like say you were just uh let me get a little um say you just wanted to do a little strip um like where does this live you were just wanting to do like this edge um would it would that that would actually hold it even like if if you were just a little a little piece like this is even holding it so it's not going to shift either like i'm just i'm just um uh, here just doing this and this is actually stuck on the sticky grid so you could do a whole like you just wanted to do an edge border um there you go and look at how nice that did it didn't shift or anything, and it's a nice crisp image. So there is that. Most most people don't do a whole <laughs> don't do a whole sheet, uh, an eight and a half by eleven sheet uh, to stencil. So you're generally doing a small portion, uh, six by six, something like that. So there's room around for the stencil to adhere a lot of times, um, you know. So there is that, but it works great for stenciling. Um, and would probably work great for layered stenciling, uh, which I think is why what this was made for. Um, so that being said, I love the stenciling portion of this, but the stamping is why I really bought it. So let's go ahead and do a, a project with some stamping. Um, super excited to show you. Um, so Claire, on the um, comments of the first video, um, had said it would probably work great for t-shirts. And she is correct. It it is will work really stinking nice for t-shirts. And uh, uh, I tested out a little bit uh, doing a sleeve, and so I thought, hey, I'll finish the shirt with you, um, and you could see how it works, um, as well as um, I'll show you how, um, as well as I'll show you how um, it does for large balsa wood items. And then I had a workaround. Um, I had a workaround for um, doing longer, uh, doing longer stamps. Um, I figured that you could probably. I tested it. If if they're not too thick, you could do uh, thinner border stamps that are twelve inches at diagonal, and then you just put the bottom in, and the top part of the item hangs out of the. Um, stamping tool so there is that so i think this this works great these little attacher mechanisms work awesome so these are five dollars these these don't come with it but this does so you don't you don't have to buy it. this isn't extra so yeah but definitely invest in some of these they work great because it's obviously a little bit easier than trying to punch them yourself although you if you gave it a you know couple of attempts you could probably figure it out <laughs> how to do it i'm like ah, it's easier just to put the little sticky thing on and 10 of them for five bucks is not a big deal <laughs> i i don't think that's a big deal um so yeah so here let me um let me show you uh what 
So here's what we got going on and uh, what I've configured. I have this t-shirt. This is an old 100% cotton t-shirt. Um, uh, it's from L.L. Bean. I have a stain on it, so I was not afraid of stamping on it. Um, although I stamped this sleeve, and look how nice that came out, right? So, you know, when you're wearing it, it's it's like this. Uh, I love it, loving that little addition because it's kind of boring. It's just one color. And so I thought, here, let me show you uh, what, what I've done. So basically... Um, if you like for doing the sleeves, the sticky grid is so awesome. So I lined this up like this, um, like this. So that's my center point, right? And I'm not, it's not going to be perfect by any means. Um, just having some fun here. And so I've got my, I've got it to where the, the, um, hinge is down here. So I'm using the very end of the platform. Uh, I've got my. Let's see, my IOD, these are the IOD stamps. Um, these are the IOD stamps that are called Wreath Builder Classics, and we're going to use these on another project as well. Um, it's, it's this one right here. So, uh, and these are Iron Orchid Design Stamps or IOD. The other place that you get these large 12 by 12 is Prima or Redesign does them. And uh, they all are super fun and fabulous and you can use them for all kinds of things. Just definitely multi-purpose. So I'm just going to pop this stamp on there. Pop the uh, lid on to pick the stamp up. And then uh, grab it off there. And you can tell this isn't shifting because of the sticky. <laughs> but the stamp is falling off. Or, oh, because um, here. It, it, it works better if it's on um, the smooth side. I had it on the grid side. And apparently that one needs washed off. A lot of times if, you, if they don't want to adhere to the uh, top plate and stuff, if you wash them, they do much better little pressure so trying to make sure as much of the bulk of the t-shirt is out as possible um so it, it has a it can stamp all the way down and then gonna just press it and then do i like where that is yeah i like that i think that's nice and then i'm just gonna do it in black um like we so actually i do want to turn this because i the camera is not um I, I can't really get the lid off with the cam. The, the camera's in the way to take the lid off. So I'll just do it like this. And I'm just using my IOD black ink. And you can heat set this um, after you're done using it. Um, it's, uh, I believe it's 390 for 30 seconds. Uh, but I'll Google that in just a second. Um, so that way you'll know for sure. Um, and then I'm just lightly... Uh, pressing this uh, ink pad onto the stamp. I don't want to get any over inking on it if I can help it. Although if it's, a, if, and that's because it's a double layer. It's a, it's a double layer of material. So you're going to press farther and there's more squishiness. So you have more propensity to get ink onto the material. Whereas if it's a single layer, I don't even worry about it. Uh, but I'm loving so now you just have to be careful when you're pressing the stamp down. Like if you have material bulk anywhere on here, um, you're you're going to want to be careful because you could potentially break either the hinge, depending on where you're at, or the lid will crack. Um, but you want to definitely make sure you put even pressure everywhere. And I have to do that because there's a rib here and the seam on the sleeve as well. See, look at how cool, right? And now we can add a little more ink to that if we want. I did get some over stamping. I'm not worried about it though. I think it's just fine. Um, and I'm going to do this. I just did the center. Let's see what if that did it. Oh, right? Look at how pretty. Oh, super stoked with that. That is pretty fun. And there's a rib. So I have to stamp over this super thick rib. Like, see? And it did that good. I mean, that's pretty decent. And now, like, how fun is that? Like, right? How fun is that? 
And uh, yeah, so did you guys see the rib? I think I was out of frame. So there, I had a stamp on top of this. That, right, that did pretty good. And if I would have wiped off the edge, it would have done better. Um, but yeah, I did this uh, sleeve here. And um, you didn't have to. I, I, I didn't push the stamp pad on as heavily as I did on that one. But yeah. But anyways, still, isn't that the cutest thing ever? So then, if you want to stamp a big design, um, if you want to stamp a big design, so I just have a dry microfiber towel. These are, I got this from Costco. Um, and uh, I just wipe, I just wipe everything off with a dry microfiber. Um, like so. And now, let's do that, the front of it. Um. Let's do the front of it, and so let me swap out what I wanna, um, what what stamp I want to use, uh, because I want to use I want to use a different one. But here's what I was thinking um, was I'm gonna use uh, this large one for the front. So what I want to do is here's what I was thinking so I don't get the over stamping like I did on the sleeve what I was thinking was I'm going to put this so I was I was trying to think about what the best way was to get this to all stay flat and what I thought was if I use a Cricut mat and you can get these 12 by 12 Cricut mats really inexpensive and so I figured out if I popped the shirt on first the shirt onto the Cricut mat first and smoothed it all out so all the wrinkles were out off the back right like this see that stain that's what we're going to cover up um if if I did that on the Cricut mat so now it's all smooth and the back is stuck down then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the platform and I'm going to put it in to inside the shirt see see right there that's that's the platform inside the shirt i'm going to stay below the neckline because i don't want that to impede um the stamping lid because there's a there's an edge on the lid not on the bottom plate but on the lid so i don't i don't want to have to worry about that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up pick up the shirt and just kind of um like flap it to get air under it and and to move it onto the platform where I'm going to want my design and then just smooth it out smooth it all out like this okay so um this let me get my stamp so uh did I say this already I'm using the Bella Iron Bella Iron Orchid Design where where are you guys at Iron Orchid Design Bella stamp I'm going to use this one here this is a big 12 by 12. So you see it has that border. And if you're going to do a 12 by 12 border, these thinner ones work the nicest. And we're going to do that on the bottom of the shirt. And I'll show you. Um, so here we go. Ooh, that was loud. <laughs> um, yeah, these are fun. You can use these for... I made a um, top... Like a top plate um, for my... Um, and I think I'm going to go about there. I know it doesn't look... Like this is crooked in here, but I'm looking down the center of the shirt and I hope, I hope this is the center, <laughs> but I'm actually lining it up with the neckline is where I'm going with this. Okay. So now what you want to do is, cause yeah, you can't, you guys can't see everything. So I lined it up with the neckline there. Can you see that? And so now this is the bottom, right? Of, of the, um, the platform. I'm just gonna roll up roll up the uh, extra material so I see that to expose the hinge okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to and there's where you have to be mindful when you have this bulky material you got to be mindful that you you when you go to press down on this you don't want to um see and does it fit oh it fits because we kept it on the platform so press down oh and I'm on the grid side the top is this is the smooth side so hopefully it picks up. Yeah, it picked up. Um, so you want to be mindful when you're pressing 
that the bulk that's on the edge, you could potentially crack it if it's too thick or break it altogether. So you'll definitely want to be mindful of that. So, but this, this seems like it's, it's actually thinner, uh, just a microscopic amount thinner on like this much down here. And I think they adjusted for that. So, um, yeah, to where it's thicker up here, but here we go. We got the stamp. So now I can take this off. And this is all smooth. This is not going to shift now because that's where we're going to put it at. And so now we're going to go ahead and ink this up with black as well. Wouldn't it be fun if I stamped the edge up there? Like how cute would that be? And now there again, I'm just going to lightly put the ink over, lightly ink the stamp up so I don't get over stamping. Although if you do get over stamping, you don't have to worry about it. What you have to worry about on this is the edge the edge that you don't get ink on the on this rib here and it's on the top and the bottom so even if you reverse it you still have that issue um so i'm gonna do this ink it up just nice get lots of ink on there get that stamp nice and juicy okay so we're gonna go like this and we are gonna go ahead and press being mindful of this edge here so now, oh, hang on, John's here. Okay, here we go. Uh, he, John just came back from helping the neighbor put a culvert in. Uh, and here we go. The reveal. Oh, see? How cool is that? Like, right? Okay, now we can make it darker if we want, or we could be happy with that. And I think this matches... The stamping on my sleeves. So I think actually I'm going to be really happy. And it covered up my ugly grease stain. Right? Like look how cute that is. Um, so now I think what we ought to do is we ought to do the border. So let me wipe this off with a baby wipe real quick. And then we'll get resituated and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I think what I want to do is... Um, now that we got that done, and I do want to go ahead and, God, look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? It's so much better than a plain shirt, right? Um, so what, I, what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like to try to stamp the border. Whoops. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Um, I'd like to try to do the border on the bottom of this. So what I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to, because of how this has to go, Oh, there's even a hole in this shirt, and I was using it for painting. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do is, I think I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put my sticky grid, uh, my, my Cricut mat in, um, all the way to the seam like this, right? To the seam like this. And I'm just going to stamp the front of this. So I'm going to adhere this. This like this. To this mat. Oh. To this mat, right? Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to go ahead and. No, actually that's why this wouldn't work. Is because the back isn't sticky. And it's still going to shift. So, okay. So here's what I've done. That's, I forgot why I, I wasn't using this. So here's what I've done. I have this uh, this sticky grid mat. Um, this is similar to the My Sweet Petunia one, but scrapbook.coms. And I sprayed Pixie Spray on the backside as well. So it's sticky on the front and the back um, with Pixie Spray adhesive, a light tech adhesive. And uh, so what I'm going to do is in order to hold both pieces of this stable... Um, so I can stamp it in. Oh, that's right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put this in the inside. Like this, up above the rib. And then... And then... Just gently smooth this out. So it's it's stuck together now, front and back. Uh, because of that double adhesive sticky grid mat. Okay. And so now what I want to do is. I'm going to take my platform. And now all both of these pieces will be adhered together. And then onto this. 
onto the stamping platform and I'll be able to, it'll be all smooth and nice and it won't shift now. Now it won't shift because there's something holding the two pieces of material together and on to the mat. So now I can do a border. I can do a border stamping now like, like this, but you still have to be mindful of the bulk here, right? And uh, anywhere else on the platform. So let's go ahead and get this border that matches, um, that matches the design. And get this off of here. Okay. And then we're just going to pop this down here. Because then we'll get a continuous stamped, a stamped continuous border along there so right okay and now it's all still stuck down and we're still using black ink so i'll take this off so i can ink it up easier and now i'm just still going to be gentle and so you still have to be mindful of the rib the edge on here you don't want to get ink on that because it'll get on your project uh, if it's touching it, actually, it probably wouldn't on this one because it's not touching it. But still, you don't want to, you know, touch anything that um, you don't want to touch anything potentially, even your clothes you're wearing. <laughs> okay, so now we'll stick this back on, and we will go ahead and see what this looks like. Oh, but maybe we shouldn't put the ink pad in. <laughs> And then we'll press even pressure all the way down. And now, because this is double thick material, like there was, it didn't matter on that one. You weren't going to get overstamping. But when it's double thick material, you want to be careful of overstamping because it's squishier and it goes down into the material farther as you're pressing on it. And especially because we're next to the rib. So I might end up with overstamping on this, but you know, it's not going to bother me. Because this was just going to be thrown in the trash anyways. Because it, it's stained. Now that it's cute and I got rid of the disguise, the oil stain. See right there, a little over. But that's actually not bad. I am not mad about that. Oh my goodness, right? How cute is that? Um, So darling. Isn't that great? Okay, so now what we can do is we can shift over. We can shift. And what I was thinking about was we could actually just turn it. We'll just turn it like this. We'll just turn it like this. And I know, you see, we're going to have to get a little obstacle there and see how that goes, right? Or the other thing you could do is you could... Let me measure this really quick to see if it's... Um, we could actually technically go this way. We could technically go this way on it. Like this. Um, I'll have to clean that stamp though. We could technically go this way, but we don't want it to shift. So I'm still going to pop this in. So the material doesn't shift. So they're both going to be adhered together. And smooth it out, right? And we're going to stamp up to this one and make it continuous. So I now I got this bulk of material I'm going to have to be mindful of. Right? Um, let me wipe that off really quick. Uh, this stamp so I don't get a bunch of extra ink uh, on my shirt. Uh, hopefully that'll do it. But it's okay. It's, it's okay. Let's see. This way. Oh yeah, that's, this is the beginning. So we can go there. Oh, see right there. That's where this one wants to live. But see how big that is. But you know what? We're not going to be able to do that. Um. So you know what? Let's, let's do the trick. Let's do the diagonal trick, right? Let's just do the diagonal trick. Because I think we can go this way instead. We'll put it on diagonal. And then it's all sticking out, right? 
See, like that. And then I can just move it down a little bit. There we go, right? Now we can ink this up very carefully. And get nice stamping. Isn't this great? Like, this tool is a total game changer. Wait till you see what I do with a 16-inch round balsa wood. 16-inch round. Like, OMG. Really cool. Really stinking cool. Wait. I might have to re-ink this one. There. And I'm pressing firmly. Right? OMG, that's so cute. You get it darker. See, you can't do this if you don't have a block that doesn't. Right? How darling is that? That is crazy cute. Okay, so now there's just this little bitty edge here. Because I was just going to do it on the front. Um, I don't know. Do I want to, do I want to, what do I want to do there? Because this will have to go all the way to the end like this. If I want to do that very edge. But I don't have the very edge of the other one. So. We could do that, I guess. And let's just ink up the very end of it. Oh, but actually, I don't want to get my thing dirty, so let's, I don't want to get this dirty, so, because I don't, I don't know what the ink would do to it, like, would it make it, now, there's a rib there, so we have to be mindful of that. See, look how cool, okay, hey, that's great. That is great. Okay, let me wipe this off really quick. And right, that is pretty neat. Okay, done with that. But see, it holds it all in place. So the little hack, put some pixie spray. Um, make sure this is nice and tacky. And a pixie spray front and back. Uh, or if it's already a sticky grid mat. Um, you know, and you could even put pixie spray on the back of a cricket mat as well. Uh, if you wanted to it not to shift and stuff, so but like come on, how cute, how cute is this with the sleeve and then and then the border, right? That look cute little border there. Like, isn't that darling? That is really cute. So boring t-shirt I was gonna throw out, boom, recycled it. Now I can wear it and it's super cute and fun. Okay, so now watch this. Um here is I made, so I was going to make another, so I made, um, like, this is what you can do with these 16 inch rounds, and I'm pretty sure these are 16 inch. This is not stamped, though, this, these are transfers, it's, this was really easy, yeah, 16 inch round, um, but a little piece of balsa wood, just a little thin piece of balsa wood, pop some little, um, this was going to be a top uh, for my creamer, but it was so pretty. I ended up, I just put a little hanger on it, hot glued a hanger on it, and I just hang it on my wall now. Because <laughs> it was just too pretty. Um, and these are the Christmas iron um, IOD transfers that came out at Christmas. Aren't those gorgeous? And they were a limited edition release, so unfortunately. But this is the stamp set I just used. And then um, one of the Reef Builder ones. And then I ended up, because I didn't want to ruin this, I made this one to go on top of my creamer. And uh, I still have to put the beads on the beads on the on the feet, put the put the beads for the feet so it doesn't slide off. But I wanted to be able to set stuff on the top of the creamer because um, it's next to a door. And, you know, how sometimes you need like an extra you just need to set something down while you grab the door. <laughs> That's what this is for. And uh, but this I stamped in the misty and it was a little precarious. Um, it worked, but it was precarious. Um, so this, this is gonna, so I started to see like how it was gonna, and it works so magnificent. So, um, let's do it because it is awesome. So basically what I figured out was there's these two nodules here. 
if you well you have to line up the stamps so let's grab the stamps uh, for this we're gonna need this set again but um oh wait no i wasn't actually doing that i was actually gonna find a transfer to put in the center but i'm using this is the wreath builder the iron orchid the iod wreath builder set and we're using this one is it this one Oh, it's a lie. No, it's that's not it. This was for something else. <laughs> Hold on. Wait for it. I use this on something else. It's not this one. It's this one. It's the little grapes. It's the little grapes. I'm actually going to put a um, transfer in the middle of this one. So, um, so yeah. So, what you want to do is you want to... So, when you, when you stamp this, you basically have to have... Um, you'll want to because this sticky grid holds the balsa wood but um you want to figure out where like this is going to fit on where you can still have the stamp on the edge of the 16 inch round and where where the lid will actually pick this up at where it will still pick it up at for you to get your continuous design um so this right here is what works for me in this. And so once you find this and you pick the stamp up, um, you want to go ahead and tape this down. Uh, whoa, you have to be mindful, though, of where. So I'm going to go back over this design and onto here. And then over here where it's, uh, I think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So let's actually see where, where is it? Okay, that misses it. So then uh, there's a little spot right here I could go. Does that, does that miss it? Okay, and that misses the design as well. So then I'm going to tape this down here. But the other thing you want to do is you want to help it. And so I figured out if I stick my Empress and the my cutting plates for my Empress under the edge of the balsa wood that's sticking off it actually helps it helps this uh hold this up but the cool thing about it is the sticky grid oh it's that's actually a little too tall um there we go so okay so minus the top plate so just just the magnetic mat and the uh the uh, bottom plate with the middle shim i guess so there there we go okay but the sticky mat makes it sticky grid makes it to where this does not shift like it's not moving which is fantastic and so then you can you can repeat stamp and get this as dark as you want it so i'm gonna go black on this again and watch watch how cool this is o m g yeah this is fantastic and you can just keep getting your stamp design as dark as you want um yeah it is it's terrific so here let's go ahead and it's looking good that looks great go ahead put some pressure and here yeah you don't even have to worry about re-inking re on this oh uh, not re-inking um over over stamping on this because it doesn't the stamp never touches um it never touches so just just getting a lot of ink on here see all the over stamping because this is such a flat thing um you, you don't have to worry about like material that's a double layer the only thing you do want is you still want to be mindful of this edge and make sure you don't get ink on it because if you push down too much you'll you'll get you'll still that's how you do get ink on your project so here we go so just be mindful of that lip there we go like a so and you could do this as many times as you want right come on now isn't that terrific that is terrific look how great that looks and see, there are so many things you can do with this. Imagine if this bugger was 12 inches wide. Oh my goodness, you'd be unstoppable. You could stamp anything if this was 12 inches. Because uh, the biggest stamps that I've actually found are 12 by 12. I actually have a 12 by 12 stamp. Um, it comes with the carrier that you use 
um, like a, a stamping block. But it, there is, I like images where I can get the crisp full image. I'm not one that if it, you know, I'm stamping an item that, you know, costs quite a bit, you know, material can cost quite a bit of money. Well, if you don't get the full image that you were hoping for, and you only get like half the image, ugh, all that money's down the drain. Well, this, if this was 12 inches wide, oh my goodness, you could re-stamp and re-stamp and, you know, do what you needed to do because it would hold the stamp and you could keep doing that. But this is a definitely awesome workaround for it. Um, and you just have to be mindful that you can only do like nine and a quarter or nine and a half, whatever the width was, um, for your stamp. So, I mean, you know, Hey, that's not a bad, <laughs> that's not a bad deal. And to be able to do this all the way around and repeat and as dark as I want, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, so definitely for the win. So, um, here you go. So don't be afraid to get this new stamping platform. It works like a charm. Um, it's definitely, where's the, where's my t-shirt? Oh, right here. Um, it is, it is definitely fantastic, uh, for, um, you know, stamping t-shirts, stamping home decor projects, stamping little gift makes. Um, it is a fantastic and stenciling. We did that stenciling. Um, you can use your own stencils. Those little stencils, stencil hangers work great. So yeah, um, this is definitely a win and I am loving having it. Um, but Sizzix, if you're watching, please make it 12 inches. Like you could put a 12 by 12 stamp on this for scrapbooking, for home decor, for whatever. And open sided and every, oh dude, if you would just please make it 12 inches to where it would take a 12 inch stamp. Oh, we would be in heaven. <laughs> Especially as, as uh, pe crafters that like to create home decor. <laughs> 12 inches wide, Sizzix, 12 inches wide. <laughs> stamp, stamps. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, if you made it this far, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little demo and hope you're having a great weekend. Until next time, happy crafting everyone. Bye-bye.